Hi everyone. Yes, I uh, got a haircut. Actually, I got quite a few of them cut. There's your dad joke for the day. Paul Anderson, Paul, 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 however, is one of sci-fi's grand masters, literally having been so designated by the Science Fiction Writers Association. Uh, and he should be. After all, he started writing sci-fi in the 1940s, along with the other grandmasters. I guess that's one of the criterion. Uh, you have to be grandfather age to be a grandmaster. But, you know, give him his due respect. Uh, he's one of the founders of science fiction, especially hard sci-fi. You know, the kind of sci-fi that you have to have a Ph.D. in physics to understand. At least that's what it seems like in this story. Earth launches a colonization ship, the Leonora Christine, with 25 men and 25 women. Not necessarily couples, uh, that takes care of itself along the way. To, uh, they, they launch the ship to a star in the Virgo constellation, 35 light years away. The ship uses a Bussard ramjet engine. I have no idea what that is. Which cannot reach the speed of light, but can get pert near. At least enough for time dilation to occur. The crew will experience five years while Earth passes 33 years. Okay, so like you turn 40 while your brother turns 68. The plan is for the ship to accelerate the first half of the journey and then decelerate the second half and coast to an orbit around a star. Well, you know what happens to best laid plans. In this case, the Christine runs into an unnoticed nebula. Which fouls up the ramjet decelerators. Eh, so go out and fix them. Except they can't. The ramjet protects them from space radiation. So if they turn it off to do maintenance or something, they all die. Their only hope is to continue acceleration until they reach some part of space with a dearth of hydrogen and radiation so they can shut down, fix everything, and get on with the mission. Problem is, such a location is really, really far away. More than the 5-year, 33-year time dilation. And they're going faster, which means they're approaching the speed of light, and you know what happens when you reach the speed of light. You don't? Why, well, you don't have a PhD in physics or something? Well, neither do I. I uh, barely got past Algebra 2, so I spent a lot of time in this book doing my best Cro-Magnon. What? Huh? Not that Anderson was unclear, uh, he matter-of-factly explained what uh, was going on in various side pieces. Problem is that a Paul Anderson matter-of-fact discourse is a thesis defense for everyone else. Problem is further exacerbated by the Paul Anderson style of writing, which is a series of hammer-blow sentences that do everything possible to dispense with subject, verb, object. Bring a smart friend. The characters on this ship are a combination of the chess club and the lacrosse team, a bunch of insufferable uber geeks with physical strength and lack of impulse control. How anybody thought this would work out, well, <laughs> It is the conceit of the uber-smart to think human failings don't apply to them. I mean, putting 25 couples together in a metal box for what turns out to be eternity is a bit short-sighted. The one character everybody hates is the one I like the most, uh, Charles Raymond, the ship's constable. Yes, a constable. 
So somebody somewhere back in Mission Control figured there might be an issue or two, so they put a cop on board. And he is all cop. Guy would be comfortable in an SS uniform. And boy is he dedicated. You'd think after year 500,000 or so, you'd lighten up a little bit. Nah, not this guy. Year 500,000? Well, yeah, don't you know tau, the time contraction formula, which is the square root of 1 minus the velocity squared divided by the speed of light squared? What? Old guy here. See you later.